Hey y'all, it's Cheryl once again with Old Fashioned Southern Cooking. Today we're going to make uh, something that is super good and um, this is another one of my fall recipes I thought I'd share with y'all. And today we're going to make a breakfast pot pie and we're going to do this in an iron skillet, okay? Um, and uh, But what we're going to do is the bottom is going to be a biscuit crust and the top is going to be just a pie crust. So um, we get the best of both worlds that way, right? So anyway, um, let me tell y'all everything you're gonna need to make this pot pie, and it is pretty simple, okay? So uh, first of all, you're gonna need preheat your oven to 425 degrees. You're gonna need an iron skillet, and um, the iron skillet, you can use cooking spray, you can use Crisco, canola, whatever you want to use to grease it, but it needs to be seasoned well, and you need to spray it down very well, or oil it very well, okay, even the sides. Um, so, for the biscuit uh, crust, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need two cups of white lily self-rising flour. If you don't have any white lily, you use whatever... Uh, flour that you prefer, okay? And um, then you are going to need a quarter cup of Crisco shortening. And you're going to need one cup of buttermilk. Um, and then you're going to want to have a little bit of extra flour for to dust your, your surface with. Um, and um, that's about it for that part, for the biscuits, okay? Or the biscuit crust, I should say. Now, for the gravy, y'all, you'll just have to bear with me, and I can't, sometimes I can't give you an exact measurement on the milk as far as, you know, pouring that in the gravy, because uh, people like their gravy thinner than others, some people like it thicker than others, some people like it browner than others, some people like it whiter, so it's just totally up to you how brown you want to brown your flour and make your roux, they call it. I just use a little bit of the bacon and sausage grease and flour, okay, to uh, start my roux, and then I add some milk to my gravy. Now, we're going to crumble up some sausage. I already had baked some sausage earlier, and um, it's ready to go. I just have to crumble it up real quick, that's all I got to do. And we're going to scramble up some eggs, but now the eggs, I'm just going to throw them in the microwave and we're going to scramble them up that way. Just something really easy, okay? If you prefer to do them on the stove, that is perfectly fine too. I've got a, here's the pie crust, y'all. Um, it's been laying out because it was frozen, but it's pretty well thawed now. But we're just going to use a regular pie crust to put on top of this pot pie, breakfast pot pie, okay? So I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator, keep it cool, because I like my my pie crust to be cool like that. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this started, okay? So give me just a minute. Okay, so I'm going to get out two cups of the self-rising flour. And um, I think I specified this before on other videos. I measure out my flour correctly, and I spoon it out into my measuring cup. And then what I will do is I will level it off, but I'm going to have to kind of hold it over my bag because I don't want to get a lot of extra flour in my bowl. So we're just going to spoon this out very carefully. See if I can do this without making a complete mess. I doubt it. You know how flour is. I can't never use flour without making a mess, y'all. So there's one cup of the uh, self-rising flour I put down into my sifter. I like to sift a lot of things. Um, I think it just makes things better. Whether it be a cake, whether it be brownies, uh anything like that. Biscuits. Um, now there's some cake mixes and brownie mixes and stuff that you can't sift. It's got nuts in them or it's got little pieces and stuff in them. Like, matter of fact, like the Cine dust cake that um, I made, you couldn't, you know, I couldn't sift it because it had those little pieces of Cine dust in it. So, so all we're going to do is we're going to sift this flour down into this bowl. And I've got a little 
finger glove on over here, y'all, because I cut my finger, and I had to put a Band-Aid on it, and I didn't want my Band-Aid getting all wet when I had to get my washcloth and stuff, so I put one of those little gloves on it, and I'll tell you, those things are really handy to have <clears throat> when you cut yourself or something, so I'm glad I bought some of those. So what you're going to do here is you're going to make some biscuits, right? You're going to take your quarter cup of your Crisco. You're going to put it down into your flour. Okay. All right. Now, all you're going to do here, before you start adding the buttermilk, of course, you're going to take a blending fork if you have one. If you don't have one, just use a regular fork, but you need to work your Crisco in with your flour until it starts to resemble pea size. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. When I make a pot pie big like this, and I use a bottom crust like a bisque for my Lord of King Talk, y'all. When I make a pot pie in an iron skillet, and I'm making a biscuit crust for the bottom part of it, I will overwork my dough a little bit. And the reason I do that is because it doesn't make it as, uh, it doesn't rise as thick when you can overwork it. So it is, to me, it's important to kind of overwork it when you're wanting to use it as a biscuit, like a crust. A blending fork is just a blessing. I never realized how much a blending fork could help you. And oh my lordy, it is a blessing to have. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add our milk. Now we're going to we're not going to add all this at one time. You're going to kind of wet the top of your flour. You're going to leave a little bit of your buttermilk in your cup because you're probably going to need it when you go to mix this in because there's going to probably be some dry areas in your biscuit dough. So, just blend that buttermilk in the best you can. See how dry and crumbly that is? Kind of pull this off the sides so I can get that down in there. I'll kind of pull this back because it's really dry down in here. Sometimes I have to use a little bit more buttermilk, but maybe not. We'll see. Okay. So, go ahead and make sure all that dry gets blended. And go ahead and just stir that dough around until it starts to form a ball. And you will see it will start to stick to my blending fork quite a bit. And that's what you want. See there? Not all of it, but some of it will. I think we got it, y'all. So, I think we're in good shape for our biscuit dough. See there? Okay, before you dust your counter, y'all, I'm sorry, this is the first thing really you should do. You should go ahead and spray your cooking spray into a good seasoned iron uh, skillet, okay? So we're going to do that right now. And I'm going to make sure that I get this good because we don't want anything to stick. I will take me a paper towel and make sure that I've just put it all over the sides of my pan. And just kind of rub it around, but not. I'm not rubbing hard. I'm rubbing very, very lightly. Just so I can get that grease to spread out a little more evenly. Okay, we got it. So our pan is ready for our biscuit um, crust, okay? So I'm going to set it back to the side for just a minute. We are going to go ahead and... Um, we're going to dust our surface with our flour. So, just run it across there and get it dusted. Okay, that's good enough. Now, you want to take your hands and you want to get them... You want to put some flour on your hands, okay? Rub them together. Get you some flour on those hands because you're going to need it. So, I should have put my dough out here after that, but I didn't. But anyway, turn your dough out onto a floured surface. We're going to get what's left. 
I don't believe in leaving things in my bowl. It's just me. All right. Let's get this off of the blending fork while we can. I can't get it all, but we can get most of it. I'm going to flare my hands again. Now, if you got rings on, you should take them off. I'm not because my hands sometimes swell, and I just can't get them off, y'all. So, I'll just have to wash them off good, wash my hands good. So, what you're trying to do, like I said, is you're trying to, you want to overwork this, this dough, okay? But now, if you were making biscuits, you don't want to overwork it. I just about had y'all out of view there, didn't I? Okay. You want to fold this, okay? Put your little flour on there. I kind of keep my flour up here if I can to keep it getting in the floor, but sometimes it, it don't always work that way. I wind up getting flour everywhere and I make biscuit dough. Okay. Fold it several times. Push it out. Because the more you overwork your dough, your biscuits won't rise as good. And we don't want them to be, we don't want our bottom crust to rise up real tall because we're making this for a pot pie, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to push our dough out. If you have a rolling pin, that's your best option at this point. Um, the rolling pin I had, I hated it. I throwed it away. It just, it would, it was, it was starting to stick to everything. It was a silicone and it was just an aggravation to me. And I don't even have a smooth glass really that I could use to roll my dough out with. <laughs> so they all have some kind of something on them. So. That's why I'm just using my hand, y'all, to push my dough out until I get it to a certain thickness. And I will get it, even if I ain't got a rolling pin, it's it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, back in the older days, like when my mama was born and actually when my granny was around, sometimes they didn't even use a rolling pin. They used their hands. Okay, y'all. So, I had to put another one of these funny looking things on. Um, this finger. Sometimes I just have trouble with watching what I'm doing and I wind up cutting myself. So, let's get our skillet. Okay, we've got a good greased and seasoned iron skillet. And what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to transfer this over. Now, we may have to rework it a little bit, but you need to really, doll, what you really need to do is pick it up like this and go ahead and put it in your skillet. We can work this in the skillet, okay? But I'm going to tell you, I don't even think I'd use a rolling pin. I just get it to where you want it, fold it a few times, transfer it over into your, your skillet like I did. Just kind of ball it up and transfer it over. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to spread this out into our skillet. And it's going to be a little thick. It's going to be a little thicker than I wanted. I probably, maybe if I would have used a cup of flour, it might have been a little bit uh, thinner. But that's all right. We're going to we're gonna get this right. So, push it up on the sides of your iron skillet. Because all we're going to do here is the pie crust is just going to go on top of it. So, okay. And just keep turning your skillet and pushing that dough um, up on your skillet. Just make sure you kind of get it evened out, though, because this side's a little thicker. So, I'm just going to kind of push it over a little bit. And we can push down the sides here in a minute if there's any up on the edge of the skillet. Now, you don't want to get too much oil in here because when you do that, sometimes your dough will try to slide on you. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. This is what I do to this crust or to my biscuit dough. I take me a little fork. I go around and I make little indentations with my fork to push it down 
into my crust. Or I mean into my skillet, sorry y'all. And then I just take me a fork and I kind of push down in here a little bit too. And that's helpful. Kind of keep it down. So we got our biscuit uh, crust made and we got it in our urn skillet. And I just took the fork and went around it and made some designs. And in the middle, I just took this fork and went over it like this. That will help it a little bit from rising so tall. And I don't think they will anyway because I overworked it quite a bit, y'all, as y'all seen. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to set this to the side. We're going to scramble our eggs. We want to get those done first, okay? Let's go ahead and do four, okay? We'll do four eggs. And I'm just going to crack them in this dish just to look at them before I put them in my bowl. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little milk out. I always add a little milk to my eggs when I scramble them, okay? Makes them light and fluffy. Um, I'm just going to add, that's probably, I don't know, y'all, that's probably maybe three tablespoons, something like that, give or take. Just add what you think you you know, you guys will like. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to uh, take a whisk and we're going to whisk these in. So whisk them in really good. Now I'm funny about my eggs, scrambled eggs. I like to make sure everything is whisked in there. I, what I usually do though is I go over to a, a fork because I a whisk sometimes is good. Don't get me wrong, but I can beat them up a little bit easier with a fork and make sure everything's combined. The whisk did a pretty good job, but it still needs to be beat up just a little bit better for me. I'm going to take these over to the microwave. We're going to put them in there. I'm just going to scramble them. Okay, y'all, the eggs are done. They look really pretty. Look at that. See how pretty and fluffy um, it makes it by adding um, just a little milk to them, I think. So, you can add cream if you want to, too. I've done that as well. Okay, I think uh, we're good with our eggs, so they're ready to go. I just need to break them up just a little bit. We don't want huge chunks, but we want some of the bigger pieces, but not real big. Because I need to scatter these out. So Now, I'm going to take some black pepper, and I'm going to pepper these just a little bit. So, they'll have some seasoning on them, just black pepper. And I'm just going to stir this in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the stove and we're going to go ahead and get our gravy made. So I'm going to go ahead and take our eggs and I'm going to set these over to the side as well until we need them. And I'm going to, I'm going to cover them with just a paper towel. Um, I just something I like to do. So I'm going to bring off the stove. We're going to get this gravy made real quick. Okay, so give me just a minute. Okay, y'all, so I got you over at my stove. Now, I told y'all earlier, I use bacon grease, okay? This is actually bacon and sausage grease. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir in my bacon and my sausage grease. And this is fresh because we had bacon just, I don't know, probably a week ago. And we had uh, actually sausage today. <laughs> so... So what I do is I take me a tablespoon of the bacon grease. I start with that, and then I think, well, I'm going to need another one. So I put it in there. Now, I'm going to make not a huge skillet of gravy, but I want to make enough, you know, to cover that uh, biscuit crust with our sausage. So we're going to add three tablespoons, regular tablespoons of the bacon grease. And I'll tell y'all, I think I've said it before, I don't use bacon and sausage grease very often. So, but when we have gravy, I will add it to my skillet because it just makes a, a wonderful pan of sausage gravy. And um, it just tastes so good. But we don't, uh, we don't eat it very often. So, um, but anyway, I, all I ever use is usually just canola. Canola oil is all we normally ever use around here, unless we're making gravy. Anyway, 
that's getting hot so what we're going to do is i'm going to turn my temperature well no we're going to keep it on high at this point okay and i'm going to start out with a tablespoon of flour and this is self-rising now this is going to be a heaping tablespoon of self-rising flour put that in there all you're trying to do here is make a roux i call it grease and flour that's what it is there's two tablespoons and we're going to add three tablespoons so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a whisk and we're going to start stirring this in and we're going to see where we're at with it but now i will tell you you're going to, have to turn the heat down and see how dry this is you don't at least i don't i don't like making my gravy like that and i don't like making it dry so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get our tablespoon and i'm just going to use this one if i'm other one um, we're going to add, this makes four, and we'll add five, okay? That should do it. I'm hoping that will do it, because I don't like to, you know, use a whole lot. Now, as y'all see, I'm trying to get this stirred in, and it takes a minute to do this. It's still looking very thick. Now, I'm going to back my heat down to in between four and two. I don't want, uh, y'all, I don't want to add any more bacon grease, so I'm going to add some canola. I've had enough bacon grease in this, and I just don't want to add any more. So now we're going to use some canola in here, and we're going to get this thinned down. See how this is turning really brown? It's getting brown pretty quick. A whisk is really good to use when you're making gravy. So you just got to keep whisking this in, and when it looks dry like that, you need to add just some more uh, oil to your your skillet. Because if you don't, you're going to burn your flour up, and it, it will, y'all. It will burn it up. So anyway, I've got my temperature right now between four and two, and it's a it's a browning. I still believe I might need to add a little canola to this. Just a little, a very little, I don't know, maybe a half a teaspoon, um, I'm going to guess, and we're going to stir that in, because this needs to be a little thinner, it's still too thick for my taste, I, I just don't like it um, to be thick like that. So, once we get this to the brownness that we want it, because you've got to get your, your flour browned, and you got to be the one to judge how brown you want your flour. And basically, like I told you earlier, this is just making up what they call a roux. It's, anytime you see roux, it's a start of a gravy, a sauce, or something like that. So, that's what I would tell you. A base, whatever you want to call it, I just call it grease and flour. <laughs> because that's exactly what it is. Now, I've got my flour brown to the, consist or to the color I want. I'm going to turn my heat off. I'll take my whisk out of here. And I'm going to use my spatula. And that burner's hot. Or that handle's hot. And I'm going to go around it. And I'm going to pull all this off the side. You want to do that. And turn that heat off for a minute. And what I do is I take it off this burner. Because if you don't, it will smoke. You don't want to burn this. I'm going to get this back over here on our burner because it's set over there long enough. We're going to turn our burner back on, but we're going to turn it down. We're going to turn it. I got mine on two. See how the consistency is of this now? It's real thin like and looks kind of pasty. Not everybody makes their gravy this way. I see a lot of women start it out and it's real dry, but you know, they add their milk and, and whatnot and, and voila. But I just, I don't know, y'all. I just do mine different, I guess. We all do. So, But anyway, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to whisk this just for a minute. Because it's gotten really brown, and that's the way I want it. You don't want to get it too brown because it'll taste burnt. I've got two cups of regular milk, okay? We're going to pour this in here little by little. But you need to whisk and pour. Just like this. Whisk and pour. Y'all can see that. Sorry, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and add almost all this milk. I might need all of it. It's looking like I probably will because I've got to get the rest of this blended in. 
Okay, let's add the rest of that milk. Now, there could be a chance we may need to get a little more milk, so if we do, I'll get it. Um, but let's start with two cups. I, I want to measure it because I want to try to help you all um, and show you all what the measurement is on that because sometimes it's always been hard because I've made this for so many years. I could just look at it and tell you how much milk it needs. So I wanted to try to help you all by doing that because I know some of y'all may say, well, you know, I need to know a measurement on your milk when, you know, you add it to your, your roux. So anyway, we've got to turn the heat up though, because if we don't, this ain't going to cook. So we're going to turn our heat up and we're going to whisk and I'm going to have to go over to my spatula. But I think y'all, I can look at it and tell you we're going to need more milk. So I'm going to add more milk and I'm going to say, how much is that? That is right about a cup. Now we'll see. And it's probably not even going to need all of this. It's finally starting to cook. And we're going to add a little more. That wasn't even probably, I don't know, that might have been, let me say, yeah, that might have been a half a cup of milk I just added, right about. Y'all, I've got to get my big whisk because I've got to be able to whisk this in. I'm going to need to add the rest of that milk. So we just added a cup. Sorry for the noise, but this whisk does a much better job. So give me just a minute to get this whisk in. Okay, y'all. So I've got this blended in good. Now, um, I had to add a little bit more milk to that. It was probably, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a cup, something like that. You'll just have to kind of... Look at it and, you know, figure out how thin you want it. Like I said, we don't want this too, too thick because we got to add it to our crust, our biscuit crust. So now I'm going to take my sausage, okay, that I made up earlier. We're going to dump that in there. And this is probably going to thicken this up a little bit. So I probably will have to add a little more meal. We'll have to wait and see. So let's stir sausage into our gravy. And like I said, make sure your heat's back down. You do not want your heat high at this point. I think we could use just a hair more milk, but now it's not going to be much. Okay. That looks like that's going to do it. I'm believing it is anyway. I'm always believing it is, y'all. <laughs> okay. It's looking good. So... Going to scrape the sides of our pan. We're going to add a little bit of the black pepper. We're not going to add a lot, just a little bit of it, so we can get it in there and give it a little flavor. Now, what I like to do at this point, like for making these breakfast pot pies, is I know that um, my consistency is right and I can tell. And it's at the consistency that I like, especially for this. So what I'm going to do, instead of continuing to cook this, I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat off. Because if you don't, y'all, you're going to sit here, and what's going to end up happening is, it's going to get thicker on you, and then you're going to have to add more milk. And then um, once you add more milk, then you'll have to keep adding more milk. I mean, it's the way gravy is. It can thicken up on you. Then you got to add more milk. So once you get it to the point that you like it and the consistency that you like it, turn your heat off and pour it over into another dish. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour this into this pot I've got sitting here. Let me get this spatula out real quick. Set it right there. And I'm going to do it right here. So y'all can see. And here we go. We're going to pour this into this pot so I can pour it out easier. See how easy and freely that poured out of that pan? That's what you want right there. Okay, y'all. Got the gravy here. And we're going to pour this in here. I don't know that this will hold all of this, but we're going to give it a whirl. So what I think I'll do 
we're going to go with a layer of the gravy like this. Just a minute, I'll show you what I've got an idea of doing. I'm going to take me a spoon and I'm going to level that out in there just like this. If you want to push a little bit up on the sides, that'd be even better. Just so it'd go everywhere. You want to keep it even. Take your eggs, and they're cool enough for me to handle now. Take you a layer of eggs and sprinkle over that uh, layer of gravy. Okay. Remember, our crust is biscuit. So we've got our biscuits already. Now I'll take you another layer of gravy. Okay. And we're going to pour this on top of the egg. If we can. Okay. And we're going to get this on here. One more or the other. I put it in this pot, y'all, so it makes it easier for me to pour. Because, like I said, I've, I've had a couple neck surgeries and my arms get, you know, weak. So I've got to use it. I've got to use a little lightweight pot to help to spread things, or I mean, pour things. So, okay, we're going to spread this layer of gravy out over our eggs. And I'll have to tell y'all how long this takes when it gets done. I can't. I just save my soul. I can't tell you a time right now because I don't remember. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it. And when the biscuit gets done on the bottom and the crust gets done on top, it'll be done. Lord have mercy, y'all. That looks great. We've got a little bit of eggs left. We're going to go ahead and sprinkle them. I'm going to kind of break them apart as I go to make them go a little farther. <laughs> y'all... I'm crazy, I know, but why not? Break them apart, make them go a little farther on top. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> so, and I didn't want to make up a big bunch of eggs because I was afraid it'd be too much. Let me wash my hands. Take your gravy and make sure that it's spread all over, though. Let me get the um, crust. Take your uh, pie crust. And this might not, I should, probably should have made it a little bit bigger, but it'll be all right. Take your pie crust, try to get it centered over top of your iron skillet. Pull the sides out. This is the easiest way I've found to do this. Okay, pull them sides out. Make sure they, you know, you don't want them to stick right yet. Tuck them under and around in your uh, skillet where your biscuit dough is just tuck it and under to right about where your biscuit dough is coming up on the sides push it down in there okay this is something that's kind of just be careful doing this you want to not break your crust and it should do pretty good for you okay and remember this is on 425 degrees and um, I'm thinking we may just brush the top of this with a little egg wash and the reason I'm saying that is because it does help it brown you can do it with butter or you can do it with egg wash it's your you know your preference how you want to do it I need to get me a knife we're gonna have to cut a little slit in this just so it's got some breathing um, room. All right, y'all. I'm going to stick this in the oven. You may want to put a cookie sheet um, under it when you go to uh, stick it in your oven. And I'm going to put it in on 425 degrees, and I'm going to keep an eye on it. When it gets done, I will bring it out, and I will show y'all uh, what it looks like. And um, now, before I put this in, though, I may do a little bit of egg wash. I don't know. We'll see. So, um, But if I do, I'll let you know that I did. So uh, anyway, I'm going to put this in and I'll be back shortly. All right, 
about y'all the the breakfast pot pie is out of the oven and oh my lordy lord lordy mercy it's going to be good so it cooked y'all for right about 45 minutes so it takes it a little bit to uh get done because you know i want to be sure that that biscuit dough uh biscuit crust in the bottom of this i wanted to make sure that it was done so I know it is. I can look down under and see it. And it's kind of browned around the edges too inside of there. Um, but anyway, we're going to cut this in a little bit. And um, we're just going to have to let it cool just for a few minutes. You don't want to cut into it right away. You want to let it cool down just a little bit. Because when you let it cool, that you know, you'll be able to get your slices out a little bit better. But um, So when I get this done, I will post a picture in the video of this and show y'all what it turned out like, okay? So anyway, y'all, I hope y'all have had a good time uh, making this breakfast uh, pot pie, because I know I have. And um, if y'all don't mind to go over to Facebook and like, share, and follow my page, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, so, if, but if you don't mind, go over to, to YouTube and like and uh, comment and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell for more delicious recipes from Old Fashioned southern cooking so anyway i'm gonna let y'all go now but listen y'all y'all stay safe out there always remember to keep god in your heart and god in your life bye y'all